Okay, this video is about uh, the harmonic series and EQ, a studio tool for shaping sound. Uh, we'll start with EQ. There's a couple important parameters um, I'd like everyone to know. So the first thing I'm doing, I'm going to bring in a sound, and this is a male choir voice uh, sample. And here we have a picture of its frequency spectrum. Let me turn this down a bit. And uh, so this graph here shows amplitude on the, on the vertical axis and frequency on the horizontal axis. Musically speaking, pitch and, uh, sorry, pitch and loudness. Um, so we can see a profile here that there's um, some energy just below 100 hertz, a little popping up at 200 hertz, uh, more at 500. Now I can uh, refine the resolution of this analyzer here. Not all uh, EQs will have this, but here we can actually see distinct spikes um, in the spectrum of the sound. Now I'm going to put them in medium. So we can use EQ to shape the sound, and there's three main parameters for doing this. Um, first of all, we're going to turn on a filter, and here we'll see three parameters frequency and right now it's at 500 hertz but we don't see it gain uh, at 0 db so not being boosted or attenuated and q which stands for quotient um, so let's uh, increase our gain a little bit so we can see what's happening here so we see a boost in the mid-range of the signal okay and um, now we could, so that's, we're boosting the signal, or we can attenuate, attenuate the signal, the opposite. And here we can cut it almost out completely. Now we have a very, oh sorry, so, so we have a very broad uh, area that we're affecting of the spectrum. So we can narrow this by using what's called the Q. And the high Q factors narrows the refinement of the filter. So here we can dial in very specific, very closely to specific frequencies. Okay, so that's Q. Let's soften it a little bit. And the third parameter is frequency, so center frequency to be technically accurate. So this is the middle frequency that the uh, frequency that's being bo boosted the most, and then we have a little fall off on either side. So middle frequency, center frequency is 500 hertz. Now let's crank the Q, uh, let's crank the gain up first. Here what this does. So I can shape the sound. Okay, boost the lows. Boost the mids, boost the highs. Or we could attenuate it. Take out some low end, take out the high end, take out the mids. Okay, so let's uh, now let's dial in and see if we can find uh, very specific elements of this sound. A uh, little trick, alt click will reset these settings here. I'm going to crank up the Q to 100. We're going to boost the signal as much as we can. And we're going to play with the frequency, see what we can find here. So way down here, you can hear a low tone, very clear tone. This is called the fundamental frequency of the sound. Uh, and we won't find anything below this, so it's the lowest component of the sound. I'm going to call it the fundamental frequency. And here's sort of a picture of musical notation. And we call this our first harmonic, or first partial. And we'll talk about those two terms in a moment. Now let's go. Now if we double the frequency, we should find the second harmonic. And in musical terms, any doubling in frequency results in an octave. So nothing, there's something, 
just below 200 hertz. So here we were just below 100 hertz, about 87 hertz, 88, double that. 180 hertz, we get twice that. And so we have these little nodes that pop out. That's the third harmonic, fourth, fifth, if you can hear that. There we go, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. You notice they're getting closer and closer together as we get higher. Okay. Let's bring this down a bit. Okay, so here's another way of looking at the harmonic series. Um, now the sound we're listening to we call a harmonic sound because it has a very distinct tone that we associate with it. Single uh um, we don't latch on to any other note, even though there's all that other information. And the frequencies that are uh, present in the signal have a very particular quality. They're harmonically related, and this is a mathematical relationship. So the lowest frequency, the fundamental frequency, there it was to round up, it was a 90 hertz. If we double that, we get the second frequency, second harmonic or second partial. If we keep doubling, we'll keep getting octaves of that. That's an octave. Those have the same note name on the staff, uh, F. And here if we double again, two times two is the fourth harmonic, F times two is the eighth harmonic, times two is the 16th harmonic, and the 32nd harmonic somewhere past here. Um, but let's uh, look at all the things in between and how they relate to music, musical materials. So first of all, we've got our octave at the bottom, the difference between the first and the second harmonic. is a uh, proved to be very important all over the world it's got this nice mathematical relationship but humans seem to be tuned into it uh, most cultures <clears throat> give it the same note name even though uh, they're an octave higher different pitch uh, same note and the octave is often used almost always used as the basis for constructing scales octaves are divided into in any number of ways to create scales um, let's go into the next significant harmonic, the third harmonic. This will be three times the fundamental frequency. So that was 90 times 3 to 170 hertz, we should find somewhere around there. Remember, I'm rounding. There you go. Third harmonic, so the difference between the Second and third harmonic, musically speaking, is a perfect fifth. It'd be the difference from the tonic of Do, Re, Mi, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, So, Do, So, Do. And uh, when we talk about scale construction, uh, the fifth is very important. Um, perfect fifth, or the frequency ratio 3 to 2. Um, okay, and then we go up, we get the fourth harmonic, another octave of the fundamental. There it is. Now the first octave, we didn't have anything in between, twice the frequency octave. Second octave between 2 and 4, we have a 1 partial in between. And now between the 4th and 8th, we have three other partials in between. So we're getting more and more as we go up. That's 4, 5, 6, 5, 4. Now it's a mathematical description of what we call in Western music the major triad. 
uh, sorry, four, five, six there, here, F-A-C. Um, and that's the foundation of Western Harmony, that little triad there. Um, like you can relate so many things to it. Um, and then if we go up one more step, get the seventh harmonic. There it is. Uh, this chord now, we call the dominant seventh, though compared to the piano, this seventh that we're hearing is much lower than uh, that on the piano. And here I've got what are called sense deviations. So if you imagine a semitone, or you have a semitone from here to here, for example, or let's do about here to here, and break that into a hundred different parts, each of those would be a cent. So 31 cents, that means it's about a third of a semitone flat from the piano. And this chord uh, in Western music we call the dominant seventh, and seventh chords have a very particular function as well that we'll talk about later. And we're back to another octave of the fundamental. And now in this octave, we get into something that looks more like a scale. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven partials in between the two octaves. And nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Mary had a little little lamb. And then as we go on the next octave, everything gets very tight together. You've got something more like a chromatic scale. Okay, a couple odd notes here compared to what we're used to. This here, the 11th harmonic. This is almost ex exactly halfway between uh, in this case a B and a B flat so it's a quarter tone which you don't have represented on the piano and similarly 12 13 also um, close to a semitone is quarter tone out from equal temperament or piano tune okay um, so the main thing one of the important things here is just to realize that we can calculate these frequencies very easily Basically, we just take the fundamental frequency, in this case about 90 hertz, and multiply it by 2 to figure out the frequency of the second harmonic. Multiply 90 times 3 for the third harmonic, 90 times 4, fourth harmonic, 90 times 5, 90 times 6. So let's do 90 times 10, and so around 900 hertz, we should get the tenth harmonic. That is it. There it is, right at 900 hertz. Okay. Uh, just for fun, let's put a couple other filters in here. And we can make some chords. Lots of fun. Let's stop there.